Good evening. Uh, I'm Jessica Atwood. I'm the Director of Planning at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And uh, Nicole and I really appreciate you letting us uh, sit in on your meeting for a little bit. My role is I'm going to be taking notes, and Nicole will be leading the conversation. So thank you so much. Do you want to? Uh, maybe we should introduce ourselves just for the record. I'm Ruth Leahy, President of Julia Bargain Chapman. A Joy Moore, President of Williamsburg Grange. I'm Madonna Olenek, um, gatekeeper. Yeah. Tom mm -hmm. Watson, uh, overseer. I'm John LaSalle, I'm on the executive committee. Christine Drake, uh, secretary. <laughs> and I'm Nicole Krantz, I'm with uh, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. I'm uh, working on uh, helping with Wheatley's digital equity plan, um, which the FERC Hub is partnering with Wheatley for, and it, the project is being funded by the Massachusetts Broadband Institute. And we're really here today to um, get a better idea of what um, people in Waitley face in terms of issues accessing the internet, whether that's connection or with a device or um, knowledge base, and like whether or not you know how to do things that you would like to use the internet for. Um, so I think um, we should start by kind of just getting a baseline of um, does everyone have internet at home or um, if not, why do you choose not to have it? You can hear your head, Tom. Um, well, hi, Ruth. Come on in. Hello. This is Ruth Ellen. Hello. She Hello. Is from Guidance Star, and she is the uh, in quality assurance inspector tonight. <laughs> She's also a deputy. And Lois Skelton, I believe you are the gatekeeper of. Sorry. Okay. Great. Maybe. Yes. This is our speaker. Thank you. Nicole Grant. Thank you. I'm here with Bert to part of the with Wheatley's drafting of the digital equity plan. So digital equity, just to define terms, it's a condition in which all individuals and communities have the information, technology, capacity needed for full participation in our society, democracy, and economy. Um, and the purpose of Waitley's plan is to guide municipal decision making and investments related to increasing access, adoption, and usage of the internet, uh, especially for um, like the most marginalized populations. Um, all right, so back to our question. Um, for those of you who do not have the internet at home or for your business, um, what reasons kind of, is it cost related or just lack of need? Um, you, Tom, I think you were shaking your head. Uh, well, I had internet for a while mm -hmm. and then uh, all of a sudden my, uh, internet got taken over by Apple and uh, all the stuff on on the internet was declared trash by Apple and so I haven't gotten back online. Okay. What, is that like um, your modem? That was a out? cell phone oh, okay. through my modem yeah. and uh, then I just haven't gotten back online. Okay. And are, do you go to any community, um, like public internet spaces, to access the internet when you need to? Well, I have been to the Sunderland Public Library. Okay. I've I got. Okay. I've done some there. Yeah. What? what about anyone else? Are there common places that you guys go to access the internet in a public space? I I have my own. I have a home. I had my own. I think that's a question, maybe, how many people have a problem? Right. Okay. I, I personally, myself, I have Comcast. 
and every six months Comcast goes up in price. <laughs> every six months, guarantee, and it isn't just one dollar or two dollars, it may be ten or twelve dollars. And, and, it, and it really, it really bothers me that we have to pay so much for somebody who only uses it limited. You know, yeah. I just think that it's outrageous what they charge. Yeah, uh, in Waitley specifically, we've heard a repeated um, complaint that there's a lack of selection of service because right. Comcast yeah. is the only option. Otherwise, yeah. you have to go to satellite, and that's a real problem. Here. Right. Um, so thank you for your comment. And I went to the X Xfinity store the other day with my friend Jane that came in late. She was with her son, and I exchanged my clicker because mm -hmm. I've only got one channel now, yeah. channel 22. And the guy says, no, just point it at the box and it'll work. Yeah, right, no. It didn't work? Oh. And uh, again, the price is really high mm -hmm. for what we get. Mm -hmm. And the service, I called in September because the line to my house from Pole was swoopy. Mm -hmm. It was stretched with snow two years ago. Mm -hmm. They'd never showed up, and the guy at Xfinity I did my name. Oh yes, you did come. And they're not going to do anything about it until something happens. Okay. Lack of customer service. Lack of customer service. And, you, and it's a monopoly. Yes. And you can't get a hold of them. They want yeah. you to do everything on the internet. Mm -hmm. And so on. Well, what happens when you can't get on the internet? Just keep hitting zero. You can't. You know? <laughs> And you try and call them, and you sit there, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait. Sometimes they disconnect you, and you have to start all over again. Yeah, wait time is 37 minutes. You know, I think it's really awful. That's the one bill I hate paying every month. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of local support um, for these types of troubleshooting issues, like, would you prefer having, um, like, someone to call, like, some some communities? have like um, neighbor to neighbor programs where people volunteer and you can call them to come to check it out as like a first line. Do you guys think that would be helpful? Or are there other things that you there might be, be helpful? already my place on the um, we have what's called Valley Neighbors mm -hmm. and I think there are people on that that you could call and they would come and help you. Has anyone used Valley Neighbors or has heard of it? Not for the not for that, but I know they've been used for them. I've used them, but not for internet services. Right. Okay. So they're known in the community. Okay. Um, I, as um, people in the agricultural Waitley community, uh, I did want to ask, like, with all the flooding last summer, were there certain uh, like aid funding that was hard to reach if you couldn't get online or? Any internet specific issues with John is our only farmer. Okay. <laughs> we uh, we were able to uh, uh, access the stuff and um, CISA, uh, you know, CISA organization. They they were helpful with farmer related stuff, and I did okay. I did get some benefit from that. But, um, did you, were there any? Um, like friction points of getting um, online and yeah, getting I, I mean, they, well, it was done through the uh, United Way of uh, Central Mass, mm -hmm. and they accepted my application, and then I never heard from them again. And uh, while they were giving out money to the stuff, and um, I, I didn't receive anything. We were supposed to get ten thousand dollars as a baseline from from that group in the beginning. And when I contacted the people at CISA, they helped me um, make sure that they found my application. Okay. And I did end up getting paid, although I was a little bit confused on some of the, um, uh, the next steps, which unfortunately I didn't qualify for a more aid. But, um, okay. but it wasn't due to the digital, portal, the digital right? part, unless you know somehow they lost my my application or misplaced my application. Okay, so. thank you. Um, okay. Do Do you guys all own <coughs> devices accessing the internet? And if not, to access the internet, like a phone or a laptop or an iPad. And if not, what is the reason why not? Is everyone on? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and how confident do you guys feel navigating the internet for what you need to use it for? So whether accessing government websites or for social family connections like FaceTime um, or healthcare. Patient portals. portals. Yes. Hello. Hi. Yes. You just have to make your goal start right thinking now. like the computer to be successful in navigating the internet. Just sort of a technophobe where I can get on something and I get paranoid. Like, if I do this right, is it going to shut me out if I do something wrong? Mm -hmm. So, if in doubt, I wait that 37 minutes and I try to talk to a live body mm -hmm. as opposed to doing it online. Okay. Um, so, fear. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what types of support do you think would help you in those moments of like? I'm not sure what to do. Would it be like in-person support or on the phone or um, like a class setting? Yes, any of those. <laughs> any of those, <laughs> any of those <laughs> yes. In person, I would like the personal. You know, so do I. Be able to talk to somebody because you go on the chat, chat thing, you type it in. I don't type that well. And, by, and they you keep on asking, are you still there? Are you still there? <laughs> you know, and it's crazy. I mean, I prefer to talk to a person. I mean, you can't do it today. No matter what it is, you cannot talk. It's very hard to get a hold of a person to talk to. Um, part of this planning effort involved speaking with like anchor institutions, like the library, the senior center, the elementary school. Um, and the library offers one-on-one -on -one, like walk-in support for tech issues and I just wanted to get a sense of how many of you guys knew that they offered that program or would you use it knowing that it's offered. What, uh, what library did you say? Waitley, the Waitley oh, yeah. Trivia. Yeah. <laughs> but you would have to go to them. Yes. Yeah. What if you've got a desktop computer and you've got a question <laughs> and you really need somebody to look over your shoulder with you, mm -hmm. it's hard to pack it all up and take it to them, you know. Ab absolutely. <laughs> The court isn't long enough. <laughs> um, but in the case where it is a mobile issue, like, or have you guys heard of that um, program? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> maybe we can work on marketing. Okay. And William, uh, so this is not Waitley, I'm just sharing it. I, I work um, with the senior population in Williamsburg and in the Hilltowns, and we it's well used in Williamsburg, but we've had to advertise it and steer people there. Mm -hmm. So people know, and they also have drop-in time. So anytime you can go to the library, but also we have specific drop-in times once a month that people can go and it's well staffed. So people know to bring their tech questions and, and their devices. And so they go second Tuesday, right? you know, 10 to 12. Um, and also they, um, the local, Councils on Aging have gotten together, gotten a technology grant in which they're um, having more volunteers in classes and people are taking advantage of them. And for folks that have something at home, you know, they can either talk them through it on the phone or, you know, work with them. So there is a need in the community and I love that you're addressing this. And there, there are troubleshooting ways of doing this. In, in some of the other local towns, so it, and it is helping. It's so glad you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you know if the South County Senior Center has anything like that? They Any just got a bunch of computers. Yeah, I mean, to have technical support at certain times. I have know? heard of only through I think the uh, Valley Neighbors do they. I know they just received them with a bunch of iPads through some sort of grant, and they're doing um, <clears throat> two day training sessions, I guess, with the iPad, but nothing beyond that. Yeah. yeah, I believe the iPads were distributed through a lottery system, and on getting them, you have to agree to attend the training sessions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I know they apply to other grants, but I'm, I'm not sure if they, um, like for programming, so I'm not sure. Um, were there any other questions that you guys saw on the sheet that you want to address, or, or just anything that I haven't asked about? That's a problem that you um, encounter around the internet. I don't know if it's a problem for a lot of people. Um, I've discovered myself to be on a very fixed income, 
and the expenses, like Chris was saying, um, for just just to be able to access the web, it's horrible, you know. So I don't know if there would be um, discounts, rebates, grants for the senior population, mm -hmm. so we could take advantage of things. I mean, we're, I'm I'm still learning, you know, and I'm I feel kind of ridiculous to say that, but I'm still learning, and the web's been out there for a while. But something that would offset some of the, you know, if we could not pay quite so much, maybe get a little more training out of it or something. I don't know. But if there's, you know, monies to be had that would help help the gray population. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I have an interesting situation. On your cell phone, you get an automatic message from your doctor or from your hospital mm -hmm. saying your upcoming appointment is, please press one mm -hmm. or press two. Well, maybe you don't know that you have a way of pulling up your dial pad. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of instructions that people would just be totally confused because they know that they can dial their friends if they need to. Yeah. But what do you do to press one if you don't know that that, that option is that's on really there? So that type of training for Just us. really basic stuff that, you know, you yeah, need every day. It takes you a long time to figure out, oh yeah, that is a dial pad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have numbers on it, but mm -hmm. that's the little icon for it. You know, a lot of us did not grow up with computers at all. Computers, I mean, no. you know, I stopped working when I was 58 years old, and computers were, you know, there, but I never used a computer. I mean, I had to learn how to do, um, you know, texting everything. I mean, I had no idea. Thank God I have kids and grandkids, you know. I mean, you know, and they're really forcing you to do it because you, all your doctors, information they want portals they want this they want that mm -hmm. you cannot talk to a person you can't get a report through the mail or anything else unless you ask for it right mm -hmm. I, I mean it's you know it's if you don't know how to use it then you're kind of stuck you know right go yeah. through your portal what the heck is that you know yeah. so what is you have to go online now to get door. into the registry to yeah. get an appointment at the registry it's a necessity to participate yeah. in society now um, so, if there were programming available, what methods would you, um, like, how would you like to hear about it? Would it, would it be through, like, the Senior Center newsletter or through the Scoop, or what, what's um, the best way to reach you guys in terms of pushing out, like, notices of all programs? Of, all of, mm. all of yeah, you guys, yeah. okay. Yeah, some people don't some people don't, get this, some people don't you know, the well, Senior well, Center, Newsletter is only by side up. Mm -hmm. okay. And so. now it's only published every two months. Right. We'll do like April, May newsletter, so it's like. Okay. So that's not the best way you would say. It's a way, and I would say include it, but it's okay. not the best way. Which would you say, just so that we can have a better sense of wait, where to wait For the Waitley residents, the school is, if the people use the, read it, mm -hmm. every it goes to every person's mail. Okay. Right, and how often do you, Every three months. Three months. Three months is it? No, no. So, so yeah. there are ways quicker. you can think of <laughs> 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 Or like an, an existing, yeah. um, so it's like means of getting information out that you can think of that might help in our future. Um, I'm probably program. stepping out of turn, but maybe we could have another open house and meet it upstairs. Mm -hmm. It's a big auditorium up there. Okay. Yeah, that would probably be a home and community service if we did it that way. Mm -hmm. okay. You also got the local channels. Yes, that pass. Mm -hmm. okay. You can put it on that. Okay. Because all the, you know, all the time. They do a good that. job on putting postings on them. Okay. Okay. All right, good to know. Well, that's the only way to get paid a so I have a thought. Um, I'm a, a member of the Secretary of Gutty Sargrange in Greenfield, and many years ago we established a group email list so that when we need to get information to all of our <coughs> members, mostly all, just about everybody now has an email. We, send, we just have to type one message and it goes out to the whole group. So if Waitley Grange were to have a group like that, that one of the members is willing to utilize, that's one way that the Grange could get it. But if you're part of another group, 
whether you're part of Kiwanis or the senior center or whatever, if they have group emails, that's another way that they could get the information out. All right. Thank you. Um, Jessica, do you think there's anything that you think uncovered for this conversation? I think that just about covered it. Do you want to go over what the rest of the plan? Yeah, so um, we'll be taking your feedback to inform um, the vision and goals and the recommendations in the plan. Um, and once the plan is complete, Waitley is eligible to apply for implementation funding. Um, and there is a grant of up to $100,000 per municipality. Um, so the plan will consist, it'll be an introduction, vision and goals, existing conditions and recommendations. Um, so we have created a draft vision and goals, um, which we can update based on this conversation and um, other resident conversations we have. Um, so if you, I didn't want to take up too much of your time, sure. Um, because I, I, I was going to just have it up, and then maybe people could comment at their afterwards. I'm not sure how we want to structure that. Um, I'm too far away to see it, so read it aloud. All right, I can read it aloud. Yeah. Read it aloud. Yeah. All right, so our vision is for all residents in Waitley to be able to access affordable, high-speed internet with the appropriate devices. Affordable access, which includes cost, speed, devices, and knowledge, is not a privilege for those who can afford it, but a right for all of our residents. The Waitley Digital Equity Plan will lay the groundwork for long-term investments so that our community may reach digital equity for all its residents. With this plan, the town will be well positioned to compete for broadband funds that may become available through federal, state, and private sector broadband infrastructure and digital equity funding opportunities. So is there anything that we've talked about that you feel is left out of that vision or that you would want to be included? Do you know, in, is there parts of town that don't have good internet access? <laughs> yes, <laughs> North Street. Like North yeah. Street? It stops at the top of the hill. We can't get cable. But I can from South, South Deerfield, Deerfield. Yeah. but I, Brenda in the farm and across the street in the campground and stuff, uh -huh. we can't get cable. Mm -hmm unless we want to pay $15,000 for them to bring it to us. Mm -hmm. right. Per family. Do you have sat satellite? Is that the alternative? Comcast, satellite, satellite. yeah. So how long is it going to take you to digest all this information, and would you want to come back to us with a report? Um, our time, do you want to go over it? So our timeline, we've already done a community meeting. Um, we've done some uh, outreach. We're also doing this along with the Whitley Comprehensive Plan visioning process that's been going on. So we're actually nearing the end of it. So we'll be drafting the plan very soon. We'll put it on the uh, website of WhitleyPlans.org. We also can print it out and leave copies at, at the library if people want to see a hard, in the town offices, if people want to see a hard copy of the draft plan. It'll be open for public comment for a couple weeks, and so people can get back to us with information. Uh, the question about, you know, do we know what areas are unserved? Any help that we can get on finding out, like you said, was it North Street? North Street, yeah. Anytime you have information like that, we could really use that information. There's going to be a time in the next uh, couple weeks, probably maybe in June, in which we have an opportunity to tell the federal Communications Commission, where are their locations that do not have internet access? And we want to get those locations on a map because that will make those areas eligible to perhaps get grant funding to pay for the infrastructure to extend the cable line or whatever service is available. Um, so I'm really glad that you that you brought that up and any information you can give us um, is really helpful about that. And I, I can also give you our you know our phone number at the FERCOC. So as you're thinking about this, if you have any thoughts, if you know of other locations that are unserved, um, or you know, as you're thinking about the vision or what we've talked about today, uh, the Franklin Regional Council governance is 413. I can't figure out how to do that on here. I need the train. <laughs> 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 uh, Ted, Ted's number. Yeah. 
sure. Ten's on the floor. Okay. Seven, 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 four. Yes. Three, one, six, seven. And seven, seven, four. Seven, seven, four, three, one, six, seven. And, um, one, six, one, six, five. Oh, it's, it's on. One, six, five. Yes, one, six, five. Ten couldn't make it tonight, so I'm filling in for ten. <laughs> Adelia, do you, do you know whether um, I'll pass you up Weber Road well, or uh, uh, I, I know there are parts of West Point that don't get it, and my, my kids have done something that's called, uh, I don't know, <laughs> they something that when the family members come, they have to put in a, a password or something, and then they can get on my computer or my... But it's, it, I don't know how yes. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have a password on your internet service. Right. Right. I have one on mine, so if any of my kids forget what it was or they got a new device. Mm -hmm. But people come to my house and they can't use their phone. Mm -hmm. That's the and phone. So That's they another get, issue, right? Or get right. my password. Do you know specific areas of West Wheatley? I, I do not because as I say my kids take care of me and I don't worry about it. <laughs> right. I, I keep thinking my son is, can't get it up where he is. Is it Mountain Laurel Road or Laurel, Laurel Mountain Road? Laurel Mountain. Laurel Mountain. He's up there and I don't think he can get it there either. He has a problem too. You know, on Poplar Hill. See, it, it, um, it, 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 I know that the church uses the chapel in the summer and they have to have uh, some kind of a device to get the uh, uh, Wi Fi. Um, oh, he probably so, I don't know. Yeah, Zoom. They have yeah, the, they they, they the, they want the, Zoom, the yeah, church. They want the church Zoom meeting, so they they tapped into the neighbors <laughs> because there's nothing there. Or whatever. I don't know. Okay, good. It's not the neighbors. Don't mind. Okay. Thank you. Tell me something. Yes. Free church. We give you all this information. Yes. We go to the feds or wherever. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility you could? The feds could challenge the monopoly by Comcast <laughs> and asking the company. <laughs> Comcast made a deal with the town. The town. Yeah. It's the town who contracts with. So a town can do, like, so the city of Greenfield has Comcast and also has its own wireless broadband uh, GSET program that they did. So you can have more than, than one, um, but you can't kind of compel it's not a regulated industry like some other ones, so you can't really force the cable companies to do anything. Everything is part of a fan franchise agreement that's negotiated. So um, we're hoping that this influx of federal funds and this influx of attention on broadband will hopefully um, make things better, but there really isn't a lot of rules that say they have to provide certain things, unfortunately. No, no. <laughs> One of my neighbors has, um, when the electricity goes off, the Comcast goes out. Mm -hmm. I, I think they said that they have Verizon, and they can get, their, their phone still works. Mm -hmm. On DSL. So, yeah. yeah. That, we have a landline on our, yeah. at our house, so if the power goes out and Comcast goes out, we still So their phone. So their phone. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's. Some services that are still there somehow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the information.